technology is is uh, used to be mainstream for a long time. It's it's about to fade out in the future. So mainly, there's still a few factories being set up that will produce this. Um, it's a very solid, very good product. Um, however, starting uh, the last one two years and in the future, the uh, Next uh, mainstream will be the so-called Topcon cell, uh, which is has the beauty that you can actually upgrade from a perk line to a Topcon line. Then there's two other technologies, silicon header retention and um, back contact cells, which I will not, uh, due to time constraints, will not uh, go into any details in this talk here. Um, so that's, that's a, a short overview where we are. And right now, uh, the majority of the new projects and the new customers, they're actually looking towards investments into Topcon. That's why I would like to emphasize this today. If you look at a typical Topcon line here, um, you can see that there's uh, several manufacturing processes. And here the one encircled in red are the wet chemistry processes. So this is, this is what RENA delivers or what RENA can offer. And um, so you start off with a texturing, and then typically after that is the thermal diffusion. In the case of Topcon, it's a boron diffusion. Then you go into the single side etching of the boron emitter, as well as uh, rear side polish and clean. Then you have the deposition of the uh, polysilicon, which is the Topcon passivation layer stack. After that, you have a single side etching and cleaning of uh, polysilicon layers and uh, stack layers. And after that, you finish uh, the uh, passivation with applying aluminum oxide, silicon nitride layers before you then go into the back end, which is the uh, screen printing line using um, uh, the metallization using screen printing. And as, as shown here, so RENA can provide three main steps for this, for this technology. So that's applying the texturing to the wafer that's making sure that you have a PN junction in the device, so removing the parasitic rear side uh, diffusion, that's the emitter etching, boron emitter etching. And finally, uh, during the polysilicon deposition, there's always a wraparound and a parasitic de deposition on the rear side, which creates uh, a small shunt. And before the final passivation here, you do need some cleaning, that's why uh, the so-called poly etching and cleaning is needed. And uh, this is, this is what we offer. And this is what I'm briefly going to uh, introduce here. So you have always a combination of inline machines and batch machines in these processes. And the batch platform that we offer for this technology is the so-called batch N600. N600 means you have uh, six cassettes in one bath. And depending on the uh, version of the cassettes, you can have up to 120 wafer. Um, which allows you for a throughput of up to 15,000 with a single, single, um, single machine. So 15,000 wafers per hour throughput with a single line or a single machine. And uh, down here is given for typical Topcon numbers, uh, is giving the, for the wafer size what actually this means and the capacity of the tool, of the annual tool, so the nameplate capacity. And right now the design for these tools is that you can feed roughly two printing lines with these 15,000 wafers per hour, making, um, making it possible that one line of wet chemistry can have one gigawatt, um, so that you have a, a streamlined layout in the, in the facility. The other application in the case of the single side bore emitter etching and single side poly etching, you do need a pretreatment of, uh, of the glass. So this is uh, is in the case of the bore emitter etching, this is a boron silicon glass, BSG. And in the case of the silicon, this is a PSG, uh, of the polysilicon, this is a PSG. You can see here, that's a rather compact machine. It's, a, it's, it's roughly five meters long. And what it does is just removes on the rear side the glass so that later the batch machine can actually do the etching and cleaning process where it's needed. And uh, what we are releasing just this quarter, so basically we released it the day before yesterday, is the upgraded version of our current inline machine, which is the fourth generation. So the upgraded fourth, so it's uh, four plus now. And uh, we increased the throughput. So now we have a 12 lane for the large wafers and 14 lane for M10 wafers. Um, 
which again brings here the capacity per tool to well over one gigawatt. And uh, this makes sure that if you are planning a line and you're requiring typically by the end customer, by the modules is that you have some kind of net capacity of one gigawatt per line that also for the large wafers you can actually fulfill this year. Um, and uh, you're safe having one gigawatt for sure, um, also with A-line machines. And I would like to give one application example here for this case. Um, so this is the, the Born emitter etching. So that's the combination of this inline machine, which removes here, as just uh, said, the uh, BSG here given in dark green. And then in the next machine, you have a rear side etching of silicon, which removes then the parasitic diffusion at the rear side of the boron emitter, as well as does the polishing. And um, this is where I would like to show you some details why it's actually important to have a good hardware and why there is not only knowledge in process, but also in hardware and how good control and knowledge of hardware can give you actually uh, an, an, an advantage in processing. So the uh, challenge in this machine, the single side uh, border emitter etching machine is that you actually have to have a very high throughput. In this case, we did the experiment on 12 lanes for M10 which means you need to run the wafers at a transport speed of more than four meters per minute, meaning you need a very high etch rate. And in this, in this experiment, we actually, on this development work, we concentrated on what kind of material and what kind of geometry the rollers have to have in order to fulfill here in this test, you can see the, the transport speed up to a very high value and um, that you have the right design and the right material in order to have a stable process. So it's really the hardware that can make the difference here uh, because you don't want to have a very long machine. You want to have a compact machine for this very simple process. And um, we did here three large uh, roller types. We did use two different tools and then the, we varied uh, the, the transport speed. So the actually the etching time um, in the tool. And here, um, this is a experiment we get to, uh, did together with Fraunhofer ISE we found out that we have several combinations where we have rollers uh, as well as up to very high speeds um, where we have a very stable uh, reverse bias current so no shunt and also you can see consistently high efficiencies uh, over almost all the materials yeah. and this means if you have the right hardware we can have a very fast etching uh, and lean um, BSG removal process. The second thing I would like to share with you today is um, is a bit more focused on the running costs of equipment. So right now, as, as the industry progresses, a lot of people talk about CapEx, but it's also very important to understand that uh, CapEx may be important, but actually OPEX for the operating costs is, is what keeps you alive, what keeps you in the game in the industry. Because you just don't want to set up a factory and then you run it and you, you realize it's way too expensive. No, you need to control the costs and need to have a smart approach and uh, the best tools to make sure that you're not wasting any resources. Um, and this is, this is actually a cost of ownership um, we did. Uh, this summer, so we are comparing China-made tools with uh, RENA tools. Uh, we're using actual field data as from mid of this year, so from second quarter. And these are some assumptions we put in. So 25% efficiency for top gun cell, M10 wafer size, and then we give a, a rather fair comparison between uh, between the RENA machines and the, uh, from our competitor. Um, so similar yield, um, similar uptime. We assume this for a PCD uh, polysilicon process, and we also used consumable prices that we uh, acquired here in India. So this is this is for a business case in India, and then we uh, give the output as a calculation of a cost for the wet chemistry per watt peak. And this is actually the result. So, and it's uh, of course. Um, you can see already it's, it's a rather large difference. So uh, this is the combined cost of all three steps. So this texturing step, the single side boron emitter etching step, and the single side uh, poly etching step for, uh, for both the, uh, the tool vendors. So this is for a RENA machine. This is for uh, one of our competitors. And um, it comes out, and this is again, this is based on real consumption data. Um, and it comes out that we 
achieve roughly about 30% lower consumption than our competition. Um, it's mainly based, uh, we have a more effective use of KOH, HF, DI water, and also our tools are using uh, less electrical power. Uh, and this all adds up um, to uh, a 30% lower running cost. And actually, if you look here more detailed into that, it's also the CapEx is shown here to invest. So this is already taken into account that Rena machines are more expensive than the com competitive machines from, uh, from, uh, from China. And um, if, you, if you calculate it for one gigawatt, you take this number and you take the, the M10 wafer, so it's between two and three million euro, uh, euros that you can save per, per gigawatt per year in operating if you have the better and more effective machine. Uh, and you can see that this will be a rather short payback time. And again, it's very nice to have low capex, uh, but the opex, the controlled and low opex is what's what's keeping you in business. Yeah, and this this also has impact, of course. Um, this is what we only took into consideration a little bit. So, of course, if you're using less chemical, you have less waste. If you're using uh, less electricity, um, it's also you need a smaller facility. And um, one of the aspects I'm going to go a bit more in detail now is the so-called Rena water saving technology. Why we have less consumption of water is here. An example. So right now our basic uh, setup in the Rena machine is a certain arbitrary water consumption, and with the so-called water saving technology, we can reduce it by roughly about 30%. And uh, here's from this, for this comparison, they actually used a lot of rinse water, the, the colleagues from China. So they had a very large uh, consumption. And that's what actually you can have well over 50% of difference in the water consumption. Uh, and this is, this is uh, used by several technologies we built into the hardware of the machine. So it's, again, this is hardware. So this is what we call high performance rinse, te rinse technology using heated rinses, cascaded rinses. So we reuse rinse water in the next one and um, what we call smart water supply for process baths to actually uh, waste as little water as possible. And just to give you an impression, um, comparing the, the uh, here in the last chart, so if you're comparing the middle, the middle column and the right column for the Rena machines, it need uh, what it means uh, because we had the Olympic Games this summer, um, a normal machine for texturing would use roughly, I don't know, would bleed roughly about 15 Olympic swimming pools of the eye water per year. And with the water saving, this is actually reduced by one third. So actually already, you can already just, just get a feeling how much less water you're, you're wasting. And then with that, I would like to sum up. Um, so at Rena, we can provide gigawatt scale solutions for uh, not only Topcon, but also for Hato Junction and Perk, of course. Um, we have, in the case of Topcon, we have three different processes, the texturing, the boron emitter etching, the poly single site etching and cleaning. And here is some, um, some as a summary of the things I just shown. So it's one gigawatt per line. Um, our tools have proven that they can achieve up to 25 or above. 25% here in mass production. We do have the lowest operating costs in the industry. And I uh, gave you a little bit of, um, of a hint uh, how this water saving is actually put into place in our tools. And uh, with that, um, yeah, again, some of that is repetitive. But I would like to thank our cooperation partners. Um, also, some part of the R&D work was funded by the German government. And uh, of course, then, thank you very much for your attention.